Do you know how many abortion restrictions are currently in place in Texas? I'm not advised on a specific number. All right. Would you be surprised to learn that there's already more than two dozen such laws in place? Well, Representative, we're dealing with a topic that exterminates a human life. And would you agree that Texas already has some of the most restrictive abortion laws in the United States of America? I do not agree. You do not agree with that? Okay. Are you familiar with the laws we already have on the books? I am familiar, familiar with many of the laws that we have. Do you know how many other states have introduced or passed a six-week ban similar to what you are proposing here today? I'm familiar with states that have introduced a heartbeat bill. Do you know how many that is? I believe that as of last week, 13 states had passed a heartbeat bill. Okay. And, and there are other states, I presume, that have legislation pending, perhaps not passed, but it's moving in other states. Is that right? I'm not advised on that. Okay. Is, is it correct that these bills, given that how similar they are in nature, are part of a nationwide strategy to ban abortion state by state? Representative, this bill is designed to protect innocent unborn life in I, Texas. I, I understand. Is, is it part of a nationwide strategy, though, to ban abortion state by state? I'm not advised on nationwide yeah. strategies. Are you familiar with a group called Faith to Action? I'm not familiar, Representative. Okay. So Faith to Action is the group that originated this copycat legislation of which SBA is part of for the six-week abortion ban. So are you familiar with Janet Porter, who's the founder of Faith to Action? I believe I heard testimony from Ms. Porter in the Senate a few weeks ago on this bill. Okay. Um, and so... Ms. Porter, it turns out, uh, was part of the birther movement, and Faith to Action, which she founded, um, has actually been designated a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Were you aware of that? I'm not advised on any of that, Representative. Okay. Do you know what Dominion theology is? I'm not advised. Okay. It's an it's a extreme religious viewpoint that Ms. Porter, who's the originator of this bill, has been a proponent of. Um, let's shift gears a little bit. You're familiar with the fact that Texas has an exceptionally high maternal mortality rate, are you not? I'm not advised on the mortality rate. Representative. Well, I'm not asking you exactly what the rate is. You are aware we have a high mortality rate in general. I would agree with you that any maternal mortality is a, is a very sad circumstance, Representative. Okay. And you're aware that Texas has a high maternal mortality rate? I'm not aware of a comparative rate to determine. Okay. It's, it's, we've actually had some legislation talking about that this session because it's, it's fairly well known. Um, are you aware that maternal mortality rates uh, while high across the board are particularly high with African-American women in Texas? Are you aware of that? I'm not advised on maternal mortality rates in relation to this bill, Representative. Would you agree that maternal mortality, whatever the rate is, uh, is often a result of poor access to health care? I am not advised on maternal mortality rates as it relates to this bill, Representative? Uh, it, it's not a trick question. If you don't have access to health care, do you have a better chance of, of suffering maternal mortality, of dying while pregnant or during childbirth or after childbirth? Is that a, is that a fair generalization that you would have less of a chance of a successful, healthy delivery and postpartum period if you don't have access to adequate health care? Representative, a successful abortion it, uh, that's not my is, question. More, my, is a mortality issue for that child. I'm talking about, I'm talking about maternal womb. mortality. I'm talking about fetal mortality. So, would you agree that lack of access to health care is one of the barriers to access to contraception? Would you agree with that? 
I'm sorry, would you repeat your question? Sure. Would you agree that a lack of access to health care is one of the barriers to accessing contraception? I'm not advised on that in relation to this bill. Well, what is your opinion? My opinion is that we owe a duty to innocent unborn lives to protect those lives from the moment a heart begins beating. I'm sorry, could you, would you restate that? I apologize. My opinion is that we owe a duty to innocent unborn lives to protect that life from the moment the heart begins beating. Okay. Do you agree with the statement that if a woman wants to get a prescription for a contraceptive, that having access to a primary primary care provider, a PCP, is uh, helpful in being able to access contraception. Would you agree with that? My apologies, I think I missed the first clause of your question. Would you agree that if a woman has access to a doctor, a primary care provider, uh, she would have an easier time accessing a prescription for contraception than if she did not have access to a health care provider? I'm not advised on that issue in relation to protecting an innocent life upon detection of a heartbeat. Okay. Thank you, Representative. Your... Thank you. You're welcome. Would you agree that less access to contraception leads to higher rates of unintended pregnancies? I'm not advised on, on that. Again, in I'm not asking you for to cite any data or statistics. I'm not asking that. I'm just asking your opinion. If, if, if a population does not have access to contraception, could that lead to higher rates of unintended pregnancies? I'm so sorry, Representative. I'm not advised on that. And so are you aware that family planning services, including access to contraception, um, while you're not advised on it, I, I'm going to presume that you would recognize that those are valuable services to help families, individuals, women decide when they want to become pregnant. Would you, are you aware that there are a lot of people in the state of Texas, but particularly in the Latin, uh, Hispanic and African American communities where, that are disproportionately underserved in that regard? Would you agree with that? I'm not advised on that matter, Representative. So you're not sure or aware, just to recap this, if access to contraception in any way relates to rate of unintended pregnancies? What I am confident of is that just, yes, yes every no heartbeat fine. matters and is worth our protection. But you can't speak to whether access to health care, including access to contraception, has anything to do with the rate of unintended pregnancies? Representative, that's not the subject of this bill, and I'm not advised Well, I think it matter. is, Representative. This bill is about abortion, is it not? This bill is about protecting a beating heart. Why, 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 does, why does someone get an abortion? I am not advised to... Multiple reasons, complex reasons, complicated reasons, I would imagine. Do you, is, is it possible that an unintended pregnancy could result in somebody deciding that uh, abortion is the, the choice they need to make? Is, it, is, that, is that possible, that that's one of I'm the causes? Ahead. The lady's time's expired.